The importance of working in God's favor cannot be overestimated. In today's video, I want to share with you how to activate God's favor in your life. And before I do that, there are a few reminders that I want to give you regarding why you need God's favor. One, God's favor makes you unique and distinguished. That's why you walk into a room full of people and the energy in the room changes. That's why you see people like you. You don't know why they like you. It's not about you. It's actually God's favor on your life. That's why God treats you differently. Talk about the Israelites. Out of all the nations of the world, God chose them. Was it because they were perfect? No. Number two, God's favor makes you acceptable and gives you acceptance before God and man. When someone carries God's favor, nobody can really reject that person. God's approval is already on that person. The Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor before God and man. That was why he was irresistible by people. The truth is once you carry God's favor, there is this acceptance quality in you that just makes you enter into places and people want to be of help to you, they don't even know why. They are compelled to serve you. Number three, God's favor puts you in the right place at the right time, which means danger might be in front of you and because of God's favor, you are behind. Danger might be behind you and because of God's favor, you are in front. An opportunity just opened and at the exact time you were told about it and you applied, everything worked out because of God's favor. It's not because of you. So do not take it on yourself. It is God's favor. Now we want to know how can you activate God's favor in your life. That was the story of Joseph's life. Everywhere he went, he found favor wherever. Which means you don't bother really about where you are in life because you know when you carry favor, any place that you are changes forms. The number one key, believe that you have the favor of God. You cannot activate what you do not have. It's until you have something, then you can make it active then you can set it in motion. And I'm not trying to give you this baseless idea of just saying, believe you have God's favor when it is not true. No, it's proven in scripture that the favor of God is already on you. Favor as a name. The Bible says that Jesus is the personification of grace and grace is God's unmerited favor. So by the time you receive Jesus into your life, you have received the favor of God. That is the first key for you to be able to activate the favor of God in your life as a Christian. Scripture says that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And if you believe and receive him into your life, you have the favor of God on your life. Number two, God's favor is not earned. It is a gift. In life, a lot of Christians try to earn the favor of God. We go after God's favor as if it is something we can earn through our works, through our efforts, through our keeping the law. But the truth is that God's favor is not a reward for your obedience. It is not a reward for the hours you put in in the place of prayer. It is not a reward for your commitment to church. It is not a reward for anything you are doing or you have been trying to do. But it is God's unearned and undeserved favor. In fact, the more undeserving you think you are of God and of his goodness and of his mercies, the more qualified you are to receive the favor of God. So if you are trying to qualify yourself by your works and your efforts, you think if I try to keep myself or do this and that and the third, that I will receive the favor of God, you are not going to receive it. Because God's favor is God's free gift. And it is free, but it is not cheap. It costs Jesus his own life. And the Bible says, Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. I so much love the phrase, the throne of grace in this passage because it talks about the royalty of grace, which is for every throne, there is a king on that throne. And the truth is Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is the king of grace because he is the person of grace. And on this throne, he is seated, dispensing grace and mercy at any time that we need it. All he needs from us is to come, come to the throne confidently. You are not coming to the throne of grace to beg God, God, please give us your mercy. God, please give us your grace. No, no, no. He said, come to receive. I don't deserve it. But because I don't deserve it, that makes me qualify for it. You don't deserve the grace of God. You don't deserve the goodness of God, the kindness of God. But you are qualified for it. Why? Because you don't deserve it. It is on earth. It is undeserved. Mercy is God's favor to avert your wrongs in the places of your failure, in the places of your weakness. God's mercy is there to avert all your wrongs 
to cover you and that is God's favor in that area that he releases to you. Grace is God's favor to bring you all the things of God, the good things in life that you do not deserve. The good things that should not come to you. But because of God's grace, it can come to you. That is why scripture says when you come to this throne, be ready to receive mercy and also come receive grace for all the things you think you don't deserve. The good wife, the good husband, because of your past, you say you don't deserve a good life because of your past. No, come to him and receive grace. It is free. It is a gift. Key number three, walking with God, righteous and blameless. This is one of the key to activate the favor of God in your life. The Bible says Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 6, it goes on to tell us who Noah is and how he found favor in God's eyes. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing. But Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. He had a form of intimacy with God. He prioritized God in his life. And friend, as you're watching this, this is a key to activate God's favor in your life. The fellowship that you have with God. Not just fellowship, but close fellowship intimacy, working with God and enjoying God such that when you don't spend time with God, you miss him. Just like you would miss a lover and you're like, I missed you. I didn't hear your voice. Your righteousness today is not based on your works or the works of the Lord. Your righteousness today is based on what Christ did for you. And when you receive this gift, you can now live right. You can now do things right. So it is a gift that actually produces right living in you because Christ Jesus purchased this gift for you at the cross of Calvary. The Bible says, They that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life. And that's the place of getting to activate God's favor in your life, which is you are reigning over sickness, you are reigning over death, you are reigning over poverty, you are reigning over lack, you are reigning over everything that would come against you in this life, in this world. The fourth key, rest in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unbelief in the finished work of the cross of Christ will leave you destitute of God's favor and his blessings. And there are so many Christians today who do not believe that Christ has paid it all, who do not believe that song that says, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He has paid it all. The Bible says that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Christ has finished every work, which means it is completed. It is now for you to live in the victory that he has gained for you. So believing that you are justified by faith in Christ Jesus and his finished work, is what activates the favor of God in your life. You're not justified by your works. You're not justified by your efforts. You're not justified by anything you can do on this earth. You are justified by His finished works. But people are already living reckless and they don't need a license to do that. So then preaching the gospel of Christ, which is the truth that will set people free, why do you fear that it will give people a license to go sin? No, it's the reverse. Anybody that says they have received the gospel of Christ and are justified by faith and their life has not changed, they have not received it. There's no how you receive it and then your life will not be transformed from the inside out because this is truth. Scripture says, for if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. The fifth key is practicing God's presence. When you are conscious of and intentionally seek God's presence, that helps you activate the favor of God in your life. The Bible says about Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph. And every time the Bible talks about that, it says, and he found favor. The Lord was with him in the prison, and he found favor. The Lord was with him as a slave, and he found favor with his master. So if the Lord's presence is with you, what do you suppose will happen? The favor of God you'll be activated and you move on the wings of that favor. Practice just enjoying the communion of Christ with you, whether through worship, through study of the word, through prayer. Number 6, 26 says, May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. In another translation, it actually says, May the Lord make his countenance to shine upon you, which means God's favor is God's face. And when you practice God's presence, it is you getting 
in front of God, getting to behold His face. And that's what changes everything about your life. And it's because of His favor that you can walk into rooms because His presence is with you and the energy changes. It's because of His favor that you get to meet people who don't even know you. They want to help you. They are compelled to help you. It's because of that favor that people cannot help but accept you in places that they should reject you. And it's because of that favor that men just want to favor you. And this is not about you so that you will not take pride in it. It is all about God. It is God, not you. So do not try to allow pride to come in to disrupt this flow of God's favor. Because that is the number one thing that can actually kill the favor of God in a man's life. When pride comes in and you think it's because of your beauty, you think it's because of your elegance, you think it's because of you and what you are able to do. No, it is God's favor. So in conclusion, God's unmerited favor is for the humble. As scripture says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So if you are humble before God, this activates the favor of God in your life. God looks at people who are humble because humble people can receive from him. Humble people will not think, oh, I can do it by myself. Or I have the technique. Or just give me a little time and see what I can come up with. Humble people go to God. They go to ask of him, to inquire of him, to tell him you are all I have got. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. Let me know in the comment section the things you believe that activate God's favor so that we can all read and keep on learning. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Uwe Mekpan. This is my YouTube channel. Do well to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Share it to other people to watch and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.